In this video, let's set up our search screen and enable the autocomplete. So in our search screen, I'm going to get rid of the container and instead just pass in a column. The column will have children. And for the text field, I'm going to go to the home screen and copy out the text field that we created here. I'm just going to remove the on tab and save that out. Let's wrap our column with a padding and that spaces it out from the side. Next, instead of where to, I'm going to pass in starting point. Let's pass in a sized box, give it a height of 10 and let's paste it in the text field again. Here, let's call this endpoint. I'm also going to change the color of the app bar by saying background color, colors dot white and set the elevation to zero. As you can see, our back button is no longer visible. For that, I'm going to pass in a leading property. Within that, we'll pass in the back button and set the color to colors.black. And there we have that again. Now we need to set up two controllers for each of the text fields. So I'm going to say final, call the first one start search field controller and set that equal to our text editing controller. Similarly, we'll call the second one the end search field controller and set that equal to our text editing controller as well. Let's go ahead and add these controllers. So for the first one, I'm going to pass in controller and set that equal to our search field controller. And similarly for the second one, we'll call it controller and set that equal to the end search field controller. Now I also don't want to disable the cursor for these particular text fields. So here for show cursor, I'm going to delete the false out. And similarly for the other one as well, I'm just going to remove that. So now we have our cursor visible. Also the cursor size is small as of now. For that, I'm just going to add the style property to our text field, set up text style and set the font size to 24 to match the hint text. I'm going to do the same thing for the other text field as well and save that out. Now we need to go ahead and access the Google Places API. So if we head over to pub.dev, we have this Google Place plugin that's available. I'm just going to copy that out. I'm going to paste that in in our pubspec.yaml. Let's go inside our dependencies. And here, I'm going to paste that in. Make sure to make the indentation right and save that out. Let's pub get and that's installed. Once that's installed, we need to actually get an API key in order to use the places API. So for that, we'll head over to console.cloud.google.com. Here in your Google Cloud platform, you have to create a new project. I've already created it here and I've called it Uber Flutter. Then you need to open up the sidebar, go into API and services, Select library. Here we need to access the places API. You'll get a button here to enable it. Go ahead and enable that. Then open up your sidebar, go into your API services and head over to credentials. Here you'll get an API key, which you need to copy out. If you don't already have an API key here, you can click on create credentials, click on API key and it'll generate an API key for you. Go ahead and copy that out. Head back to the app. And here, let's go to our search screen. It's always better to keep the API key in a safer place, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to use it directly in the file. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our init state method here. Within this, we'll call state, and then set up our API key here by saying string API key is equal to and pass in the API key. So here I'm just going to create a variable called Google Place and give it a type of Google Place, which is available from the Google Place library that we just installed. Since we're not giving it a value right now, we'll just pass in late. And then in our init state, we'll set it up by saying Google Place is equal to, call the Google Place method, and that takes the API key that we just created. Let's save that out. And now when the search screen opens up, we can get access to our Google Places API. So the process is fairly straightforward. Once the user enters any text into the text field, we'll call the Google Places API, which will return us a list of matches, which we'll display here. So that means we need to get access to the data when the user enters it. That can be done by passing an onChanged to the text field. So the first text field, I'll pass in an onChanged with a value. Here we'll check if the value dot is not empty, then we want to call the Places API. Else, we want to clear out the search that we already had. 
So let's set up the method to call the API. Here above our build method, let's call that method autocomplete search. Within that, we have a value of type string that we'll pass in, and the method is going to be asynchronous. Here we'll say var result is equal to, and we'll make a call to the Google Place API using await Google Place dot autocomplete dot get and pass in the value. Then we'll check if the result is not equal to null and the result dot predictions is also not equal to null. Basically predictions is the set of matches that the API provides us. And we also want to make sure that our state is mounted. Then here, what we'll do is we'll set the state to update our predictions. We haven't set up a variable for the predictions. So let's do that here. We'll use a list of type autocomplete prediction, which is again available to us from the Google Place library that we added. Let's call that predictions and set that equal to an empty list. Now here, once we make sure that we have got some results back, we'll update the state by saying predictions is equal to result.predictions. And since it can be nullable, but we're sure that it has a value, we'll pass in the exclamation mark. Since we're not displaying our state here, let's just print out the result here. So we'll say print result.predictions. And then we want to get the first prediction from there and just print out the description, which is going to be the name of the place that's returned. Since our autocomplete search method actually doesn't return anything, we can pass in a data type of void. So now we can come down here in our on change text, we can call our autocomplete search, pass in the value. Let's just reload the app. I'm just going to open up the run tab as well. Let's try and search for a place. So we'll say Apple. As you can see, we're getting a set of results back. We should be using a type of debounce in order to prevent the search from happening so fast. So I'm just going to do that here. I'm going to set up a timer, which will prevent the search from happening on every little click. So for that, I'm going to just set up a timer here. So it's going to be of type timer. Let's call that debounce. In order to access timer, we need to import in our dart async library. Now we can come down here. And before we make the autocomplete search, we'll say debounce is equal to pass in a timer. Within the timer, we'll say duration. Use milliseconds and set that to one second by saying 1000. And only once one second has passed, will we then call the following method. So let's move the if else block inside the debounce. And since duration is a constant, we'll pass in const. We also want to make sure that if the debounce is active and the user types in something again, we cancel the debounce and start it again. So we'll say if debounce dot is active, then we want to debounce dot cancel. And by default, we'll give it a false value. So if debounce is active, we know it's available. We'll pass in an exclamation mark here. We'll cancel it out. And only once one second has passed, will we make the API call. This will save us some money. Otherwise, we'll be making unnecessary calls to the API. Let's save that out. Let's run the app again. Let's open up the run tab. Now let's search. So we search for Apple. It waits for one second and then makes the call. So we don't get multiple results like we got the first time around. We'll use the same onchanged method for our other text field as well. So I'm just going to copy that. Come down to our text field, pass in unchanged, we need a value. And here within this, I'm going to paste that in again. So now even in the endpoint, if we search for a place, we should get a result. In the next video, we'll actually display the results and allow the user to select the result for the specific text field.